There's nothing more frustrating in this life than seeing one of your favourite Netflix shows get unceremoniously canned. And unfortunately, we are in an era where the once protective streamer is now like the biggest serial killer of TV shows in the entire world. Nothing is safe, seemingly, no matter how popular it is. Honestly, it's so bad that if you're a fan of one of their shows that isn't finished or at least has a final season announced, you're probably going to bed every night just hoping that you don't wake up to the news that it's been binned. And why these Netflix cancellations hurt in particular is because often there's no real rhyme or reason as to why one show might get cancelled and another gets renewed for one, two or maybe even three more years. The streamer is notoriously secretive when it comes to the data they reveal about their movies and TV shows, and even the small sliver of information that we do have is often confusing. It doesn't seem to matter how popular a program may seem or how many hours watched that it might have racked up, Netflix has cancelled plenty of seemingly popular shows in the past, leaving their fans infuriated and dissatisfied, wondering what the hell happened, where did this go wrong? However, in a fantastic Reddit post from user JD Bullock, there's a breakdown detailing how completion rate might actually be the key in deciding which shows get renewed and which shows get cancelled. Based on this argument, it means that the most important metric to this company is just how many people start a show, but also keep with it right until the end. How many people are jumping in on episode one and not leaving until the series is over. So the idea is, if a series doesn't have huge viewing numbers, but the bulk of those viewers watch every single episode of a season and quickly, then that particular series is more likely to get renewed than a show that brings in massive viewership figures, but who's viewers ultimately don't stick around for the conclusion of that season. Essentially, those types of shows where you watch one or two episodes think, this is alright, I'll get back to it later, and then three months go by and you think, oh my god, episode five was out, I need to get to that right now. Still with me, right? Now, admittedly, this has always been a question that's been raised when talking about Netflix's viewing figures. Sure, we might know how many millions of households have watched a certain thing, but we also know that Netflix banks a view after just two minutes of someone viewing it. We have no idea how many people actually made it past that two minute slot, whether they made it halfway or all the way to the end. So it was always unclear whether anyone was sticking around for the full thing or not, and just how reliable that household number was. Now, the hours watched figure eventually gave us more of an insight into a title's success, but even that proved to not be specific enough, as shows with high figures were still getting the chop. Well, referring to an argument published last year on what's on Netflix, this Reddit post points out that the completion rate could be key to understanding why shows are cancelled. Using what's on Netflix and Digital Eye for their stats, they point towards two 2022 shows, those being First Kill and Heartstopper, which had radically different fates despite having radically different viewing figures. For First Kill, that vampire-centric offering amassed an impressive 97.66 million hours of viewership across the first four weeks that it was on Netflix. In comparison, Heartstopper clocked 53.4 million hours viewed across its own four-week period. As the post points out though, despite the disparity in those numbers, it was actually First Kill that got cancelled while Heartstopper was renewed for a second season. And this is where the completion rate is key for a service like Netflix. To highlight this, the post points out that 66.96% of people who watched First Kill's debut episode decided to watch the show's second episode. Episode. From there, 58.23% of that initial viewership watched the third outing, 54.43% watched the fourth, 51.44% stuck around for the fifth, 48.42% bothered with the sixth, and 44.32% watched the seventh episode. All in all, only 43.11% of viewers who watched the first episode of this show actually stuck around and completed the whole thing. Where Heartstopper is concerned though, and according to this argument, why it got renewed, is that 73% of viewers who jumped in for the first episode stuck it out the whole way and watched the entire thing. Now, the Reddit post also points out that the recently cancelled 1899 is also further proof of this trend. 
Now, by all accounts, this was a hit show for Netflix, amassing a whopping 80 million hours viewed in just four days. That's not four weeks like the other shows I'm talking about. That's within the first week, within the first five days. And that sounds pretty good, right? Well, it got cancelled anyway. With a drastically low completion rate of only 32%, though, that might be the most important figure in understanding why this promising and popular show got cancelled. Now, as mentioned, all of this data is actually sourced to a great article on What's on Netflix, which last year similarly argued the fact that completion rates are key when it comes to deciding which Netflix shows are renewed and which are cancelled. Using data obtained from analytics page Digital Eye, the write-up explained that 50% was the magic number when it came to what Netflix was looking at. Any show with a completion rate that fell under that threshold was in danger of getting the chop. In the article, What's on Netflix point out that the data shows that Resident Evil, The Irregulars, and First Kill all dropped below the 50% completion rate, and all of those shows got cancelled. Now, at the time of recording, it's unclear whether Warrior Nun, the latest show that Netflix has cancelled and absolutely gutted fans across the globe, will follow this rule. The data for season two, unfortunately, isn't out yet, but its first season had a completion rate of 58%, so if it has fallen close out of that dreaded threshold, then that might make sense as well. Of course, it's important to note that this rule isn't hard and fast. There are, of course, exceptions and anomalies to take into account. There are other factors to consider, and quoting the marketing director of Digital Eye, the write-up explains, quote, When Netflix was releasing a high number of original series each month, there would sometimes be cancellation of shows with relatively high completion rates. That said, while there are, of course, other things to consider, like a show's production budget, it does seem pretty compelling that this completion data stat is something that the executives are looking incredibly closely at. Hell, this has even been mentioned by Netflix's own creators before, who have drawn attention to the power that this stat can wield. Neil Gaiman, creator of Netflix's The Sandman, even took to Twitter to urge viewers to watch the show as quickly as possible in order to secure a second season. Replying to a fan who asked if it would help the show's chances of success if they binged watched it all in one go rather than staggering it out, Gaiman replied, quote, It does, yes, because they, Netflix, are looking at completion rates, so people watching it at their own pace don't show up. End quote. The showrunner behind the aforementioned Warrior Nun as well, Simon Barry, also indicated that these completion rates were similarly key in that show getting a potential third season. In fact, Barry also took to Twitter in response to someone asking whether Warrior Nun would be renewed to say, quote, This seems to be determined by total Netflix views and full season two completion rate in the first 28 days. So tell every living soul you know to watch it and watch all eight apps within the shortest reasonable time frame. Also, repeat viewing is encouraged. I have no say whatsoever, end quote. Now, this kind of paints a pretty grim picture, doesn't it? For Netflix, it's not enough that people are just watching and enjoying their shows. They need to be living and breathing them, completing them as quickly as possible. And shows that don't gain this rabid fan base aren't deemed as worthy and as substantial as the ones that do. And in a cold business sense, I guess that makes sense, but when you look at the way that modern people consume TV, to me, this just seems entirely off. Kind of like it flies in the face of modern TV viewing habits. I mean, look at competing streamers like Disney+, Plus, who actually adopts a weekly model for their TV shows, which arguably gives their shows far more of a public footprint and impact when they come out. And it simply gives fans, both hardcore and casual, the chance to involve themselves in the conversation and not feel like something has passed them by or they can't jump in. I mean, not everyone can sink time into watching eight episodes of a TV show in a night or hell, even a weekend, hell, even two weeks, a month, whatever. Our time is very precious right now and everything is vying for our attention. It's natural in the modern age that we dip in and out of things. One night we might watch something here and another we might watch another show over there. Hell, right now I'm personally balancing The Walking Dead with Nathan for you and let me tell you that leads to some uh, pretty strange tonal whiplashes to say the least. For Netflix though, and this is just my assumption now, that's not what they want at all. 
Spending a week between episodes of 1899 means there's a whole week where that audience might get distracted by something else on a competitor's platform. A high completion rate keeps viewers on Netflix, watching Netflix shows, subscribing, and maybe even checking out other content on the platform. The tubes need to be in your mouth at all times, and producing a show that doesn't produce that in the audience apparently isn't what Netflix want. So, the moral of the story, I guess, is completion is king. If you want to see more of a show, you've got to do what Neil Gaiman and Simon Barry were talking about. You've got to watch it as fast as possible and make sure you watch Watch it right to the end. And I don't know, man, is it just me or does that feel a, a little bit dystopian? I'm not sure. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Did you see this Reddit post? Have you checked out the original article? And have you jumped into just what the completion rate means for your favorite shows? Let me know and while you're down in the comments, if you could, please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists, news, and editorials like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.